And welcome back to Hannity. It is the disturbing story everybody's talking about. Four African Americans from the Chicago area have been charged with a hate crime, as well as a variety of other offenses, after kidnapping a special needs white man, torturing him with a knife, and even making him drink water from a toilet, all while ranting about white people and President elect Donald Trump. I understand kids and pranks. I was a bit of an incorrigible child myself. I don't understand the evil. The outright evil. They were literally taking this kid's scalp with a knife, forcing him, beating him. And I, I, I don't understand this kind of evil. I, I don't know where it comes from, how this. How this well, the Hannity authorities claim alleged South Carolina church shooter Dylan Roof has confessed to killing nine people during a Bible study on Wednesday. Now. We have all these past incident, incidents where Columbine, Aurora, for example, Sandy Hook. Later on, we find out that these, these kids are on psychotropic drugs. Some people right. make a connection. There was an arrest, we believe, for Suboxone, which is an opiate substitute that in and of itself can be addictive and has properties that some people act out this way by using the drug. It, do you believe evil's a factor? Is this biochemical in nature? Uh, is this somebody that we should have you know, realized early on based on his Facebook postings and rantings and ravings to family? Did they have an obligation to tell authorities? How do you see the mind of a madman here? Why in so many instances do we see that these psychotropic drugs have been used? And in this case, he had the Suboxone connection, uh, which indicates that there might have been opiate addiction of some kind. And that in and of itself is a drug that has negative side What's effects. This? But do we have to look at these medications? Do we have to look at how we're treating people Definitely. that are showing signs that they're not coping properly in life? Uh, are we over-prescribing? Do we even know the, the real side effects of these drugs on certain individuals? Because that, that the rate of incidence of these shooters and the drug use and the connection is yeah. undeniable. They healed some illnesses, but mm -hmm. I think when you, like our other guests said, deny the reality of evil, you want to use medicine to solve every problem, and it doesn't solve every problem. And Sean, there's a great danger here too. The Diagnostics and Statistics Manual, version five, could literally render all of us, 50% of our society, <laughs> labeled uh, mentally ill. So then what are the implications? Because people want to medicalize this. They want to say it's a sickness. The doctors want to make a buck. Uh, they want to uh, psychologize this. The psychologists and the mental health professionals uh, want to say they can solve it. And they want to politicize this. Let's not forget that uh, Soros has put a lot of money into the politicization of these instances, Sean, when in reality, we don't have the answers. And so since we don't have the answers, why can we not recognize as a culture that the separation of God from our society isn't working That's right. and needs to change? All right, guys, we're going to leave it right here. This agenda-driven journalism has been exposed so nakedly, Sean, the, way in, the ways in which uh, the racial aspect of this crime has been covered up by so many leftists, oh, they, they, and the they, ways in... Yeah, they had a hard yes. time reaching the fact that this was a racial hate crime. But here's another part of the equation that we've got to talk about. And we, we dealt with this a little bit on the program last night. Over nearly 800 people killed in Chicago this year alone. Since Obama's been president, nearly 5,000 killed. 4,000 shot this year. Well, because Chicago is the poster child of the violent and sick hellhole of progressivism. And it lies squarely at the feet of the likes of Rahm Emanuel, the Democratic Daily Machine, and yes, President Obama and his wife themselves, who come from you, Sean, Chicago over the years about the progressive climate of hate, uh, whether it is the hate that's been fomented by CARE and Black Lives Matter and this Southern Poverty, Poverty Law Center, which get to define what hate crimes are, yeah, um, and them. where they fall, where they falsely accuse the right. It's always blame right you know these is? people. Liberals, you know what? Liberals, they ignore racism within their own ranks. They make it up when it doesn't exist. And they manufacture it for their own political gain. Shame on them. Fake hate crimes versus real hate crimes. Great point. Michelle, by the way, Happy New Year, and we're really glad you're back on the show. Good to see you. Congrats.